give it up for one or three black guys in here. <laughs> See, I'm an old school black guy, born in 1968, and I'm the kind of black guy, when I walk into a room for people, I look for the black people. First and foremost, that's an old school black guy. See, these young kids, they don't know anything about that. They got Michael Jordan, they got Jay-Z, they got Obama. So they don't know anything about walking in a room and looking for the black people, it's what we do. Now, speaking of taking a shit, <laughs> whenever I take a shit, I, stri I strip down, but I'm all naked, because I have to be comfortable whenever I take a shit. And after I finish taking the shit, I wipe my ass real good, but I also wash my ass real good. If I'm able to, I take a shower. Because, first of all, I'm a 54-year-old man. And at 54 years old, I'm too old to have shit stains in my drawers. <laughs> Holy you, sir, don't mind me asking. There you go. God, we're too old to have shit stains in their drawers. You know what I'm saying? Anybody in here is dirty or under? Any 30 year olds in here? That kid back there. You're still allowed to have shit stains, bro. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You got a few more years, man. So, anyway, let me get started. I, didn't, you know, I had the piggy bank on the, the shitting conversation. Little yellow bird with a little yellow bill. He landed on my windowsill. I lowered him in with a piece of bread. And then I crushed his fucking head. <laughs> the moral of this story is, if you want some head, you need some bread. <laughs> they say the best things in life are free. But where's all the free pussy at? <laughs> Women are expensive, man. Birthdays, holidays, apologies. <laughs> If you're the kind of guy who screws up as much as I do, you're gonna spend some money on apologies, man. A few years back, I screwed up so bad with my wife, it cost me three bitcoins to get back in. <laughs> and now I'm still out, you know? But nevertheless, what's your name, sir? I can tell you're gonna be my friend. Yo, bro, my name is Joe Alexander Hobson. I go by Xander on stage because it sounds cooler, but I'm a Joe. But Joe, yes. one Joe to another, what do wives and hurricanes have in common? <laughs> they both scream when they come, <laughs> and they both take the house when they leave. I'm happy to see everybody out here, right? After the COVID, man, because we had a shutdown, man, and it really set the world on fire, set a bunch of people back. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Folks, I want you to give Fenris a big round of applause because COVID hit me really, really hard. Both of my brothers died within 24 hours of each other, and I also lost my wife. Aww. I'm fucked up sitting here looking at all these beautiful couples together. I almost cried, but Ferris has held me up, and I gotta give it to him. He's a hell of a guy. I give him a big round of applause. <laughs> now the crazy thing is this, right? One of my brothers was an atheist, and the other one was a Muslim. And I can't help but to wonder if they're wrong. They're in hot water right now, you know? And as for my wife, my beautiful, 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 lovely wife. Folks, let me tell you something. That COVID hit, my business went under. I was losing all types of money. And what I did, I started looking around to see what my biggest expense was. And I realized that my biggest expense was my wife and I had to lose her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, my wife was cheating on me with my money. Because my money, my money was hanging out in places that it normally didn't hang out at. My money was hanging out at Nordstrom's. It was hanging out at Saks Fifth Avenue. My money had no place, no business hanging out in places like that. 
My money hangs out at farmers markets. You know, people. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's what I was thinking about. But I will say this, right? COVID was something else, man. And one of the benefits of COVID was people were wearing masks. And we didn't have to look at ugly motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, man, listen, man. Let me tell you, it was a blessing. I forgot, actually forgot that it was ugly people. <laughs> because people were wearing masks. And everybody was at the very minimum good looking from the eyes up. You know what I'm saying? So COVID was good in that aspect. Another good thing about COVID was if you are a philanderer like myself, I think it's philanderer, a cheater, you can walk past your in-laws with your mistress, with your mask on, and they not know it's you. Now, the downside of that, keep it in 100, your wife can walk past you with her guy or your in-laws and you not know who she is. Because, hey, it wasn't me. Was that you? It wasn't me. You know? But I'll tell you, the greatest thing, I'm telling you folks, this was the greatest thing about COVID. Do you know the greatest thing about COVID is a black man could walk around with a mask on and nobody try to kill his ass? <laughs> huh? I mean, think about it. Before COVID came in, a black man couldn't even walk in this room with a hoodie on. Motherfuckers be ready to shoot your ass. But when the COVID kicked in, man, a black man could walk around with a mask on and nobody looked twice at him, folks. Let me tell you something. I was running late for an elevator and I had a mask on. It was a beautiful old white lady like her, not to call you old. She was on that elevator. And just as I was running to that elevator, it was closed. I said, I don't believe this bitch. Do you, do you know that she had opened that elevator door open and held it for me? A black man with a mask on? <laughs> on the elevator with an old white lady? Check this out. I was going in the bank and a policeman was coming out the bank and did you know that this motherfucker held the door for me? <laughs> a black man with a mask on, come on. So that's COVID, you know. Now this is the one thing I will say. I think that the mask I think it was stupid, personally. I'm going to tell you why I think it was stupid. And this is why I believe that the mask will not protect you from COVID. Because if a pair of drawers and some pants will not protect you from smelling a fart, <laughs> why on earth would a mask be able to protect you from getting COVID? So, Now, while I'm thinking about this, what I'm getting ready to say next is very important to me. I am a director and producer of Boston Documentaries. I have a YouTube channel. If you Google my name, Xander, X-A-N-D-E-R-J-H-O-B-S-O-N, it'll take you to my Facebook, my YouTube, and my Instagram. And if you were to go into my Facebook page, I'm sorry, my YouTube page, and click on my playlist, it will take you to the eight boxing documentaries that I directly produce, as well as a bunch of other boxing topics. And of course, I have my stand-up comedy. Now, folks, the reason why I'm able to direct and produce boxing documentaries, because once upon a time, 54-year-old Xander J. Hobson was 13-year-old Xander J. Hobson, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old Xander J. Hobson. And that young Xander J. Hobson, he was a hard fighting motherfucker from the gritty streets of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And when I was a young man, if you ask me what I did for a living, I would tell you I knocked motherfuckers out. I was the Junior Olympics champions. I was the ABF champion. I was the Pennsylvania Golden Gloves champion. And right before, I was getting ready to turn professional. My very last fight in amateurs was against the great Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Did anybody in here know who this man is? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Bernard the Executioner Hobson. Hopkins. Hopkins. 20 middleweight title defenses. Three times light heavyweight champion. 1984 was standing across the ring for me. And when the ref called us in the middle of the ring and was giving us our instructions, he said, guys, listen, I want a nice, clean fight out of you. 
He said, now, what I want you to do, I want you to touch gloves and go back to that corner. And when that bell rings, I want you guys to come out fighting. Joe, let me tell you something. When me and Bernard touch gloves, Bernard said something to me that I will never forget until this day. Just as we touch gloves, Bernard said good luck and good night. <laughs> So when I woke up, right? <laughs> I was back in the locker room. And I said to my coach, right? I said, Smiley. He said, Smiley. I said, what happened out there? He said, Xander, it was the damnedest thing, man. I never seen anything like it in all my years of boxing. When Bernard told you good night, you fainted. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was tough. How you doing, man? What's your name, dude? Maggie, man, check this out, man. You got sassy ladies, you got trashy ladies, and you got classy ladies. Which one are you? Bam! Ain't gonna get the argument out of me. You know what I mean? What's your name, dear lady? Phyllis, check this out, right? Because you look like a smart person. Very smart. She seems like she's smart. She looks at me. Sassy. Sassy. She's with Joe. Phyllis, check this out, right? Maybe you can help me because me and Ferris got a bet going on. If a half of a chicken lays a half of an egg in a half of a day, how long does it take a grasshopper with a wooden leg to pick all the seeds out of a dill pickle? You know what There you go. What's up, sir? How you doing, man? What's your name? John. John, do you know why some people's bark is worse than their bite? Because their breath stinks. They breath stinks. You know, playing is something because they breath stink. What's your name, big brother? Tim? Tim, check this out, man. I'm just curious, man. Listen, I don't want you to get in trouble. You don't have to answer this. But what was the last time you told a good lie, man? A good lie. Five minutes ago. You know, he doesn't lie. Sir, when was the last time you told a good lie? I understand you guys are with your wife, so I don't understand. I want nobody to get so. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. You got to have a good line in your arsenal. You have to have a good line in your arsenal. Now, let me tell you something real quick, folks. You don't lie just to be lying, okay? You don't be lying about the size of your dick. You don't be lying about the number of chicks that you bagged. If you want to lie, you lie to the police. <laughs> you lie to the bill collectors. Hell, you lie by getting a shot. But you do not just lie just to be lying. Let me give you an example, right? Uh, maybe about a month ago, right? I had an appointment up in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, and because I'm a black man, I was running late. And <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there stuck in traffic, right? And next thing you know, an ambulance go whizzing by me, right? And I thought it would be a good idea. Is that him? Is that you, Joe? I'm going to tell you how to get out of it. So, right, this ambulance goes whizzing by me. And I fall in behind the ambulance, right? And I'm making great time. And so I look in my rear view mirror, and I see this cop ride behind me. And he's like, pull it over. Pull it over. So I pull over, right? He walks up to me. He looks at me and says, yo, bro, you better have a damn good reason why you ride behind an ambulance like that, I'm going to run you in. I said, my wife is having a baby. He said, oh, shit, I apologize. We got to catch up with that ambulance. He said, we got to get you up to that hospital. I said, officer, you damn right we got to get up to that hospital because I had a vasectomy, and I don't want that bitch put my name on it. <laughs> Folks, on a serious note now, I'm telling you the truth now, this is no bullshit, straight shit. I am a Marine Corps veteran, and I am also an Air Force retiree. Now, I might not look like it. But I'm a veteran 
of two wars and numerous conflicts because I was married for 30 years <laughs> to four different women. <laughs> but let me tell you something, folks. As a serviceman, I am a staunch advocate for the military, Joe. And let me tell you something, folks. Whenever I see a young man, I make it a point to say, yo, join the military. It'll make a man out of you. So when I discovered that President Joe Biden signed the bill paying for the complete sex change of a man or woman, folks, you don't know how relieved I was because now I can finally say to a young lesbian, join the military. It'll make a man out of you. Here. I don't want to abuse Pemberson's generosity, but I'm going to get out of here on this one, folks. This is my closing. Folks, I done had a whole bunch of near-death experiences. When I was a young man, I survived the streets of Philadelphia. When I was an airman in the Air Force, I survived a crash landing in Tazar, Holman. This was around 1996. In 1988, I fell off the back of an aircraft carrier into the Indian Ocean. Could you imagine <coughs> falling off the back of an aircraft carrier into the Indian Ocean? And when you come up out of that water, you see your entire fleet sailing away from you? I had a fat chick sit on my face and almost smothered me to death. <laughs> and the only way I got her off of me, I bit her. Folks, let me tell you about the most dangerous experience I ever had in my life. I was fucking the wife of a police captain. And on this one occasion, me and her were on our way into the hotel, and he and his mistress was on the way. And when I heard her say, oh shit, I said, what's wrong? She said, my husband said, Jesus Christ. I said, what to do? She said, keep walking. But we walking toward this motherfucker, and I'm scared to death. And Joe, we got maybe like an arm left away from him. And she stopped, and she said, you lying, cheating, dirty motherfucker. I finally caught your ass. And I got my lawyer here as a witness. <laughs> I got it, don't worry about it. All right, let's keep the show moving. Are we having fun so far? You better, what other fucking comedy show in Honeybrook are you gonna go to? Are we having fun so far? All right, well, let's get the next time we go on stage.